Hi guys, welcome to video number 29 in the series of tutorial videos for the Canon 500D T when I kiss X3. Um, excuse my cold at the moment, full of a head cold. Um, in video 29 we're going to have a look at the metering bolts. They are evaluative, partial, spot metering and centre weighted average. Uh, now what I have in front of the 500D at the moment is a scene of random photographic objects um, lit by the ambient light in the room. Uh, you'll see what I've got on that um, desk, or not desk, sorry, the set of drawers more clearly when I show the images. And you can see also the brightest part of that background is the LED light that I have on there. And that's something that can throw um, the camera's meter off a little bit as well. Now, one thing to talk about metering first before we get into this. Um, the camera's meter on the 500D is a 35 zone metering system, which is based off grayscale. Scray scale, hmm, that's right. Grayscale or mono, um, unlike the later generation of cameras um, 550D upwards, which take into account colour information as well. Um, also, the camera will be biased in terms of its metering for exposure towards the autofocus point being used. Um, so, if you switch autofocus points from one part of the scene, which say is a different value, maybe it's darker or brighter than the last one that you were shooting, you're going to see a difference in exposure there. So that's just one thing to note, but I'll show some images that show that later. Now, that auto autofocus point bias is only relevant in certain modes. Um, like, for example, I mean, if you're spot metering and you move to one of the outer autofocus points, um, it doesn't actually follow the autofocus point being used. The spot metering one, you're best using the center autofocus point for that um, to take your meter reading. Okay, so the first metering mode that we're going to have a look at is evaluative. Uh, now, you can see on the back of the camera, we're in evaluative mode there, shown by that symbol um, that you can see there. Uh, the camera's on aperture priority at f4 ISO 800, that's so we have consistent aperture and ISO values. The only value we're going to see change is the shutter speed during these images. Now, evaluative mode, um, otherwise known as matrix metering, sometimes on other cameras, um, we'll take a look at the scene as a whole and try to do well by everybody or everything in that scene. So we're trying to take an average calculation looking at all the values of that scene and trying to get a good exposure. Sometimes you have to make a compromise. Uh, I mean, photography is all about compromises, certainly, and exposure. Um, so just bear that in mind. So we're going to half press on the shutter. I'm using a cable release to fire this at the moment. There we go. And we get a 50th of a second. So we'll take that shot there on the evaluative. And that's the exposure that we've got there. That's actually a little underexposed. Okay, things which can actually throw the meter because it uh, is white and dark tones, uh, certainly white tones or brighter tones, like the LED torch, can cause underexposure. The camera's trying to see the world in 18% grey. Okay, so um, it can be fooled by dark things and very, very bright things. This is where we have to compensate. And getting to know your camera's meter and getting to know the histogram as well uh, will help you in a long way to learning about exposure and what you're going to get from your camera when you take that first shot. Okay, so we'll go to the next metering mode now. And that is partial metering mode. Now what this is doing is actually looking at the center of the image. Okay, so if you look through your viewfinder and you'll see a circle around the center AF point, it's not metering just within that circle, that's for spot metering. And it's just metering within that circle and slightly outside of it. So within that inner circle of the autofocus points, okay, so it's meeting that, metering that center or partial part of the frame. Now you might think that center weighted would do that, but remember it's center weighted average, so we'll come to that later on. So we'll have a look at partial metering. Uh, we get a 60th of a second. So we'll take that shot there. Okay, not a too dramatic of a difference. Okay, now partial metering, you could use that, for example, to just shoot a backlit situation. You could also use spot metering as well. So if you have a subject stood in front of a big bay of windows where there's loads of bright ambient light coming through, they're going to be quite darker, obviously, in exposure than what's, been, what's coming through the windows. So you could use partial, okay, to meter that center area on the frame, which could well be where you have your subject stood or placed, and it will bias the exposure towards that. Okay, so we'll go to spot metering now. Now, spot metering uh, will meter a very, very selective part of the frame, and uh, it's either between 3 or 5% on most cameras, so it's a very, very, very specific part of the frame. 
and you can use it to meter an actual specific part of your subject. It could be someone's forehead or cheek to get a good exposure for their skin tone, um, because if you're taking portraits, that's the most important thing. Uh, okay, or a particular part of the scene or a element or subject within the scene that you're trying to photograph. Now, this is only applicable to that center circle that you see through your viewfinder, which surrounds the center autofocus point. So you can only use the center autofocus point and that circle for spot metering. Some more advanced cameras will follow the uh, spot metering as you move to a different autofocus point. Um, so as you go to the outer ones, the spot metering mode will kind of follow and then meter off that spot autofocus point. So we'll take a shot here now and spot metering. You'll see the values slightly change. Okay, and that's the one thing about using semi-automatic modes is like aperture priority, shutter priority, is you'll see the exposures change and jump as you change composition. The camera moves uh, sometimes, which is why you get more consistency in manual modes. So we can see the exposure we get from spot metering. Okay, and we'll go to the next one now. There we go. Let's let the camera settle. And this is center weighted average. And you can see the different symbols as they're coming up on the back of the screen, which determine which mode that you're in. Um, you can refer to your manuals if you want to get to know the, more about those symbols as well. Now, center-weighted average um, actually meters from the center part of the frame, but also takes into account average, average out information from the rest of the frame. Okay, it's kind of like an evaluative, but more biased towards the center elements of the frame or, center, or whatever's in the center of the frame. So we'll take a shot now on that mode. Uh, we'll see we're not getting too big a shifts, uh, but we can see some shifts in exposure depending on how the camera is metering that scene. Okay. Now, I mean, center-weighted average, you might want to use it if you are, your subject is staying pretty much center frame, but you're still considering, considering the rest of the rest of the frame or the background um, important in terms of exposure. Evaluative, you could use as well. Remember, the camera will. Uh, Auto the, will be biased towards the autofocus point being used if I could talk. Okay, so remember that as well. Now, the metering modes which I prefer to use myself are evaluative, about 80% of the time. Reason is I shoot manual, so I can, knowing my camera's meter, I can dial in a rough, a good rough exposure fairly quickly um, these days, take a test shot, and then adjust accordingly. And I will sometimes go to spot metering if I want to meter a specific part of a scene. Um, say like someone's forehead or cheek, remember I do portraiture most of the time, or a certain element within the frame. The partial metering center weighted average I rarely use. Rarely, rarely use. Um, I'll let either evaluative metering take care of it if I'm shooting in aperture priority and I'll apply exposure compensation accordingly, or I'll just go to manual um, and do it that way. But practicing getting to know your camera's meter, how it looks at the world, remember it wants to get everything to that 18% grey value. Okay, and just shooting, 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 getting to know it, and eventually you'll, it will click. You'll start to know what your camera's going to give you exposure wise when you go into a situation. And you may even find you can go into a situation and dial in some settings F2.8, ISO, ISO 400, and you know you're going to be around the 50th to 40th of a second mark, which is enough if you're shooting with the 50, 50 millimeter lens but it all comes with practice now talking about the bias towards the auto focus points I switched the camera onto um, evaluative metering mode earlier on and we'll have a look at these images now the first um, image which was focused on the camera manual or the actual Canon camera on the can camera manual um, on the center auto focus point and that gave us this exposure Okay, now we're going to see a dramatic change when I move also focus points to the lower right one, which is focused on the LED torch. And now we see a dramatic change in exposure. We're now up to 250th of a second, which is a much faster shutter speed. Okay, and it's grossly underexposed the image because it's biased towards the auto focus point that it's using. And that bright LED torch is considerably brighter than the picture of the camera on the camera manual. Now, if you've got any questions at all about metering modes, um, then shoot me an email, ask me on Twitter, um, stick it in the comments below. You can set something up like this yourself and practice and just look at the results, look at the exposure information in what's called the EXIF data on the images and just get to know your camera that way. Uh, one thing to note about judging the exposure on the back of your camera, you can obviously look at the histogram 
but in terms of the brightness that you have set on your LCD for the image previews, have that set to one setting and not on automatic and leave it there because that can sometimes trick you um, when it comes to judging your exposure looking at the image preview. Okay, like I say, any questions, um, stick them below or shoot me an email. Don't forget to subscribe to my other channel, which is New to Photo, which I do with a good friend of mine, Mark. Uh, I'll be continuing on with that project. And thank you very much for watching video number 29. And uh, we've got a few more videos to come to finish off this series, uh, some of which I think you're going to really like. I've got something special planned as well, uh, as well as a couple of Google Plus Hangouts and a Ustream live stream as well. Uh, details I'll post on my website. So thanks for watching as always guys and I will see you in the next video.